Right, let's do something very, very silly in this absolutely cursed software. Uh, this pixel art health bar, kind of old school video game type thing. I'll we'll press the button. Hey, look, it increases and it decreases. It's just a little spin button. Um, lowering and raising that bar and you might think actually that's really easy just draw this somewhere and then paste it into um, a bar chart and you know what yeah that probably would be easy but uh, you know you've got to scale it right to get the pixel art effect so actually this is way way worse than that let me come to my view tab and put the headings and the grid lines on this is actually the cells being uh, conditionally formatted to make the effect. There may be like a legitimate use for this technique. If not, it's just a bit of fun playing around. So let's start up a new sheet to do this. Uh, first things first, I'm just going to grab a load of columns. I'm sure there's a faster way of doing this, but I just cannot be bothered to learn it. And then just make them square-ish so that I'm dealing with some squares. There we go. Now we can colour these in as we like. Uh, and the first things first, I'm going to create a grid of uh, four cells up here. Um, this example here, it's six by six cells, but I'm going to make it four by four just to make it a lot faster to demonstrate. And I'm going to add some conditional formatting to this, just with the color scale. There's nothing there to conditionally format. So first of all, I'm going to manage the rules and edit it. And I'm going to set the lowest, middle, and uh, highest to numbers. And it's going to go 0, 1, 2. Uh, you don't need to pick these numbers. They're just quite convenient as long as you know where they are. Highest color I'm going to make white. Middle color I'm going to make, actually, I'll make it blue, be a slight different color to the um, the example there. And then I will already rehearsed it earlier here make a dark teal kind of color it's slightly more artsy if you can kind of make it darker and change the hue a little bit so okay and apply that now if i type in number one you can see that very intense blue color is going to appear zoom in use the space a little bit so what i need to do is kind of draw myself a little gem knowing that zero is a really dark teal color maybe i don't make it exactly zero i might make it 0 0.2 uh, 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 do something like that and then up here maybe not make that 1.5 1.5 1.5 so it's obviously going to round off to two uh two two one maybe 0 0.8 0 0.8 0 0.8 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, something like that. And if we zoom out, we can kind of see we've got that kind of gem effect. It's got a little bit of a shine to it. It's a bit darker here. And we've also got a dark line here to separate it. So that's pretty good. Uh, and the final thing, I'm just going to highlight all of this, change the number format. It's a trick I've used before. If you go to custom and type in three semicolons. That uh, overrides kind of the positive zeros and negatives to not render the number. So the number completely disappears. And the final thing I'm going to do, highlight all of those again, and I'm going to call that unit. Right click, define name, go through the name manager. Doesn't matter. Here's my shortcut, is that little window in the corner. Now, if I type in unit, I get the numbers. I don't get the formatting. So what I'm going to do is copy the whole thing, uh, put it, yeah, I'll just start it here. Two, th three, four, five. Yeah, copy the whole thing. There you go. So 10 of these. Uh, now, this is really just to size it up. So I'm going to put a black bar around it. Uh, so not only do I know the scale of it, I've also pasted the conditional formatting. So if I completely delete this, well, I can start putting in numbers uh, and it will color it in. So that black border has been pasted in as well. So that's kind of optional, but it was just kind of there to highlight that this is an area I'm going to use. So you can get rid of that border if you like. And final thing, I'm going to merge these cells here. I'm going to call that health because uh, it's kind of a health bar so why not let's just call it that 
draw my black border around there. Oops. Maybe make it, I don't know, seven. Scale that up, put it in the middle, and what, what what's my pixel art font? Was it the a Minecraft style one? There you go, there you go. Now it looks a bit like this. So what can we do? We can, well, we can kind of try and paste these in, but we kind of want to make a dynamic as well related to this number, whatever this number is. And one way we can do it is with an option called H stack. So these take any kind of arrays and they kind of stack them on next to each other. Uh, H stack does it horizontally. Uh, v stack will do it vertically. So I'm just going to take H stack. In my array, I'm going to say I called it a unit. So if I go take both units there, there you go. I can stack those together. I can put a third one in, a fourth one. It gets a bit tedious. And maybe we want to put if statements here to kind of read off this number and say if it's greater than this, include it. Oh, that would take a while and kind of would be really tedious and not very flexible. So what we're going to do is realizing that that's recursive, uh, use a lambda function and make it recursive. Ha. These have all sorts of weird uses now, don't they? So uh, let's begin with setting up a lambda function. So what do I need for this? Well, obviously, I'm going to need to have an input output type thing. I'm going to have to take this unit uh, and then I'm going to recursively stack a new one onto it. Now, because I've already labeled this area here as unit and this area as health, I don't need to define those within the Lambda function. They'll just be dealt with. They don't, don't need to be defined or inputted. And I need an I, just kind of to initiate it as well. So this number needs to be uh, incremented every time you call the recursive function. So <clears throat> with those two in mind, how am I going to escape this loop? Well, if I, my uh, index here is equal to the health uh, number. Well, I just want to return whatever the input was. Just like return it, whatever, we stop the function. And if false, I want to call the function again. So I'm going to call it health, I if I spell it right, health bar, doesn't really matter what we call it. I'm just calling it that because it's kind of a computer gamey health bar and then what does that function have? Well, I need to jump back to the beginning. It's going to have an input and it's going to have i. Actually, I'll do the i first, in fact. i, we want a plus one, and then we're going to close off all the brackets. But what is this function? Well, the function, we're going to h stack. So h stack the input with a unit. That's it. That is all we are doing. So each time we call the function, we're going to stack these together, add a new unit, and increment i by 1. And once i reaches health, we stop. So that's not going to do anything on its own. So I'm going to control C that to copy it. Come to formulas, name manager, and C. I've done that before. Health bar. Paste that all in. Make sure I've named it the same thing. OK that. Now, if I type in a health bar, well, my input is going to be, uh, well, unit, I'm going to initiate it with an i0. There we go. We now have seven health bars, except, hang on, this is eight. Here's the problem. Let's reduce this to zero. The problem is that the input here is the initial unit. So even at zero, we've got something in there. Now, we can't leave that blank. It will produce an error. But what we can do instead is initiate it with a sequence. So sequence, I'm just going to make it four rows. doesn't matter what they are. But what you'll see is we'll have kind of a blank sequence here. And then we will uh, start chaining these on. So if I make this four, you know, you can see here. So what I'm going to do instead is control X that to, cop, uh, to get rid of it and then paste it here just before. Now that's a little bit of a hack, a way around. So it just means the initial input here is going to 
be hidden and then we're going to start um, adding things on. So it would be lovely to just have that input as uh, blank, it kind of produces an error. So we've got to initiate it with just a blank sequence and we can hide that away. And then we can start chaining these together. So five, seven, zero, it's going to disappear. 10 fills the whole thing. So really very, very, very uh, silly. Maybe there is a legitimate use for this uh, somewhere. Maybe it's not a pixel art thing. Maybe you need to generate some arrays that are a bit bigger, but you know, uh, there we have it.